guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you're having a fantastic day. Y'all, let's do some more fun crafting for him. Stay tuned. So welcome everyone. I am so glad that you decided to join me today. We're going to have some super sweet fun. So first, my apologies if you can hear my air conditioner in the background. So I'm not able to work in here today without the air conditioning running because if I did, you would just see huge beads of sweat rolling down my face because it is that hot today. So today we're going to make more little items for him. So this is what we're going to be making today. It is a nine inch box and it holds something really, really sweet. And I'll show you what that is once we get ready to go over what's needed to make the project. But I think that dad or anyone is going to love this super sweet project. Now, this truly is an any season, any reason, any gender project because all it takes is a simple swapping of the paper. So y'all know what time it is? It's time to get started. All right, y'all. So here's a closer look at today's project. When finished, it measures nine by three and it's one and a half inches deep. And on the front for decorative purposes, I added a cute little faux leather belt buckle. Didn't do anything to the top because I want to keep that very simple. And then when we open it, we have a nice little sweet treat box on the inside for him. And there's not a whole lot to this project. You can dress yours up as much as you want, but you guys know me, I'm pretty much of a minimalist. So I've kept mine very simple and to the point. You can spread some shredded paper across the top if you want. This truly is intended to be a one and done box. That's why I'm not reinforcing it with chipboard at all. And then when he's finished with the box, you can remove this decorative piece and you'll have an embellishment. But I think putting that on there just adds a nice little masculine touch to this box. So here's what we're going to need to make it. And so here's what we're going to need to make our project. We're going to need one piece of 12 by 12 decorative cardstock. The paper that I'm using is from Authentique and it's from the Authentique Mister collection. And this particular paper is the Mister 10. So if you're looking for this paper, the SKU is 389-446-9899. And then I have two pieces that measure one and a half by three. And then I have 10 mini candy cups. If you're looking for these cups, I'll have a description linked in the description box below. So I'm going to bring in my scoreboard and on one of the 12 inch sides, I am going to score at one, at four, at five and a half, at eight and a half, at 10, and at 11. Then I'll rotate it to the other 12 inch side that we haven't scored yet. And we're going to score at one and a half. Then we're going to take this and rotate it to the opposite end of this side. So I now have that one and a half inch score here and I'm going to score at one and a half again. And this is a great paper to explain why I just did what I did because this is not a true 12 inch paper. If it was, the tip would be right here. It's not, it's right in between the 11 and 7 eighths mark and the 12 inch mark, meaning that I don't have a true 12. So what would have happened is if I scored at one and a half and then I scored at 10 and a half, knowing that that should give me a one and one half inch piece right here, this side would be shorter than this side and my box would be slightly off. So that is why I take my papers. If I'm scoring, let's say one and a half on one side and I need one and a half on the opposite side, I'll score at one and a half and then I'll rotate it and I'll score at one and a half again because what that'll do for me is regardless of whether or not I'm working with a true 12 by 12 in this case, I know that both of my ends are one and a half inches. So hopefully that explanation helps those of you who have had questions about why I score and then flip to the opposite side. That's the reason why I do it. So now I am just folding and burnishing my scores. All right, so once you have all of your scores folded and burnished, you're going to notice here that you have two one inch scores. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove those two one inch corner pieces. So 
So I am just going to remove these all together. All right, so because we aren't putting chipboard in this box, I do want a very firm front to this box. So I am going to take these two one inch pieces, fold them over onto themselves, and then fold them over onto my one and a half inch piece. And that's going to give me a very firm lip on this. So I'm going to take my tape runner and just add some tape, fold that over, and then I'll take my tape runner again, and I'm just being very generous with my tape, and I'm going to fold that over. So this is giving me a very firm front to this project so that when I bring this over, I don't have to worry about this part causing that to just press in because it's weak. So now that we have it like this, we're going to go ahead and free up our tabs. So when I free these tabs, I'm going to cut out in this direction. And I'll do the same thing here. So I'm just going to free that tab. Free that tab. And I'll go ahead and go over to the other side and repeat it. So let's free the tab. Free this tab. So now that we have our tabs freed, I'm going to turn it this way. And we're going to go ahead and remove these two corner pieces. So now your project piece should look like this. What we're going to do on these flaps right here is we're going to take them and we're going to do a slightly deep angle cut only at the front. So then your project's going to look like this. We're going to go ahead and take these tabs and just angle them slightly. Not a deep angle, just a very slight angle. We'll do the same thing here. So I'm just doing a very slight angle. And now we have our box that we can put together. So I'm going to take my glue, place my glue on that flap. Then I'll take this flap and I'm just going to join it like that. Use my phone folder to make sure I have that nice and stuck. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. I'm going to take my glue place my glue on that piece and then we'll do the same thing we'll get it nice and stuck go on the inside with the bone folder and get that stuck and then I'll do the same thing with these pieces I'm going to take my glue place my glue take this piece and get it stuck Use my bone folder to go on the inside and get that nice and stuck. And then I'll do the same thing over here. And then I'm going to bring in my scoreboard and I'm going to take the two pieces that measure one and a half by three and on the one and a half inch side, I'm going to score them at three quarters of an inch. Then I'll fold them in half and give them a good burnishing. I'll add some glue to these. And then I'm just going to take them 
and put them on the edge just like that. And that just finishes off all the way around very nicely. So now we can take it and because we've angled that, we should be able to take that and put it on the inside. This will actually fold over on the outside for the closure. So now I'm going to bring in my 10 candy cups and I am going to add some glue to the bottom and we can just put those in place. So when I put these in, I'm making sure that I don't put them all the way to the edge because I do need that to be able to go inside and close. So then I'll take my glue, add some glue to the bottom, and place that one inside as well. And then I'm just going to start placing these all the way across the box. And I'm putting glue on the bottom because I don't want them to go anywhere. And then I'll just put my glue in until I have my box nice and filled. And so now we have a sweet little candy box. And you can take whatever candies you want and fill it. So then I'm going to take one of my faux leather belt buckles add that belt buckle right here. This is just an element that I'm adding to mine. You don't have to do it to yours at all. And now I have my sweet little candy box. I can take my candies and this time I'm just going to fill it with the kisses. We can take our candies and put candy in each one of these cups. This is just a little simple gift for him. So now we can take this, close that lid, and the way that I'm going to close mine is oh so simple. I'm going to use a pop dot. I'm going to place it right there. Fold that over and get that stuck. And now it's closed, but it's easily opened. So you can close it, open it, and the pop dot is not going anywhere. So I'm going to close it one final time. So now you can see that we have two very nice upscale looking candy boxes for him. Guys, it doesn't take a whole lot to take something also oh simple such as Hershey's Kisses or some Lindor chocolate balls, place them in a custom made box, add those candy cups to give it that more upscale look, decorate it slightly, and you have a beautiful little gift that you can give him. And if you want it to place a gift card on the inside, this is wide enough to support a gift card. So guys, I hope that you have liked this super simple way of giving a sweet treat to him. If you have, please hit that like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join this amazing online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.